Good evening to our panelist, uh, Srinivas DP and uh, Vamsi Krishna. As we are just discussing, we did in the past with uh, hospitals, then we did for warehouses. Today we are talking about uh, surveillance in educational institutions. As you all of you know, this surveillance, the monitoring system is completely different from warehouse to hospital to healthcare or a uh, hospitality industry or a commercial establishment to educational institution. So why we picked up uh, educational institution? Because it's a complex uh, uh, monitoring system in schools and colleges. After, especially after the pandemic, you want to monitor the performance of the classrooms and the teachers and the students. And even though they sometimes they may be online, how do you track them? And uh, there's so many incidents if in the country, you know, in schools. You could also see, in, especially in Kerala, I'm a Malayali, I could see uh, drugs outside the, just outside the compound of people, un, uh, un, uh, what do you call, unidentified people loitering near the compound, trying to sell the drugs to the student. Now, how these life-threatening or, you know, <laughs> Uh, very important uh, incident is not recorded. You may record, but I don't think that you can get those incidents the way you want. So what does the video uh, management system do in this scenario? How can uh, schools and universities get maximum advantage of your existing cameras and security? So my uh, today the panelists uh, are uh, going to elaborate uh, how the VMS can help and enhance the uh, monitoring, security, and maximize the resources. So I would like to present to you the Durang, one of the India's leading video management system. Durang provides its vision solutions that transform existing CCTV setup into smart, surveillance solution. It's very important to note, it's a smart surveillance solution through artificial intelligence and video analytics. Founded in 2015, Durang gathered a highly talented global team to create this cloud-based platform. Their innovative video streaming and storage technology offers clients that ultimate in video surveillance functionality delivered seamlessly from the cloud. Durang help businesses and organizations to maximize the potential of their surveillance camera. To do this, Durang built a secure, reliable, and cost-effective video platform that provides users with deeply intelligent analytics and insight in real time. They have headquartered in the US, they have r and in Finland, the global Development and support is based on Hyderabad. Mr. Srini. Okay. We have a speaker today, Mr. D.P. Srinivas. He's a CRO from Durang Tech Service based in Hyderabad. He has 22 years of diverse experience in various industry. He is the co-founder and CRO of Durang Inc. A leading, the leading provider of video surveillance analytics as a service. He has been instrumental in shaping the product design and features and providing market insight. Being, being a voracious reader and extensive traveler, he is a strong believer in concept of innovative ideas coupled with strategic implementation and commercialization lead to create job and wealth. This mantra can lead corporate India to become world economic leader. Very wonderful statement, wonderful vision of Mr. D.P. Srinivas. Welcome to you, sir. Thank you very much, okay. Dominic. We have uh, Vamshi Krishna, CEO of Durang Tech Service. Vamshi has 25 years of cross-functional management experience. He has extensive experience in dealing with cross-cultural teams and customers from across the globe, including US, Europe, 
South Africa and Middle East. As a head of operation of Durang for over eight years, he has overseen development, implementation, and support of the cutting edge Durang Vision Smart Surveillance Solutions. With strong focus on quality, he has spearheaded the implementation of ISO 9000 and product development and technical support process within the organization. As a technical evangelist, he advocates and helps customers benefit from understanding the limitations of the technology innovations in the surveillance industry. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, it's a continuous webinar that we have been doing every month. Today, we are focusing especially on the educational institutions. So as every month, we'll be covering various market segments. Let us all join together and understand benefit out of this wonderful short webinar. And we are here to support your requirements and understanding to meet your clients. So over to uh, DP Srinivas and Bamshi Krishna. It's yours now. Right. Uh, thank you, Dominic. And thank you, everyone, for uh, joining. Um, we would like to take this um, uh, presentation in a kind of interactive mode. So we request you, in case if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Um, you know, hand raise or through submitting a, a you know question in the chat. Um, going back to what Dominic said, uh, you know, education industry or, or what you call educational institutions uh, per se, they are uh, very uh, kind of like you know submitting all these um, uh, high-end uh, educational tools and creating uh, and imparting high education to all the kids. <clears throat> there is a lot of, um, uh, you know, talk about uh, Indian education across the world. Our fundamentals are so strong. We are, uh, you know, so good in giving uh, trainings and, uh, you know, early education. But having said that, <clears throat> these institutions build their reputation uh, decades, decades together. It won't happen overnight. So most of the institution, uh, you know, more than 10 years, 15 years, 20 years in India. So these are all, uh, you know, struggle on a daily basis to keep up that reputation. But what happens is uh, one or two incidents that we have seen in, uh, you know, many, many situations, which is out of control, could have been controlled, but you know, prevention was not done. So those kind of a scenario, the decades of, um, uh, you know, the reputation that is built uh, will dilute in no time. And, you know, prevention of these incidents is better than, uh, you know, trying to rebuild the reputation, what we uh, you see in most of the cases. So having said that, what is the primary importance of what you have installed already? Every institution got, uh, dozens of cameras and most of them you don't even know whether they are recording anything or if they are recording there is no way you can retrieve on an incident basis or most of the times this data gets piled up so much it's uh you know pretty much lost data and uh you know there is no point whenever uh, there is an incident happens if you just want to look up for a vehicle that has come in the morning it becomes humanly impossible because somebody has dropped. There's an incident in one of the schools that principal has explained to me. They get hundreds of cars in the morning. They, they drop at 8.30, between 8.30 and 9. And one of the person has come back to the school and said, my driver has dropped um, you know, the kid at 8.30, but you are not allowed him inside because it is beyond nine o'clock. The school doesn't have any track record of the vehicles that are passing, dropping, and then going. Could have been a very, very easy two minutes job of retrieval and then you know preventing the scenario of uh, any blame game. So these are the very simple things that need to be there. Uh, God forbid if an incident happens, you need to have proper retrieval, you need to have proper uh, you know incident management. and proactively you can mitigate this. Having said that, I'll request Vamshi to open the uh, uh, presentation, Vamshi, we can drive it through. So how do we prevent is what our focus is and what are the challenges today uh, in this kind of a scenarios? 
how the institutions can step in and then create an ecosystem uh, on the surveillance, which you have uh, already existing cameras, no need to replace most of them. Apart from those, you can actually reinforce more cameras, but keeping all these cameras in uh, uh, you know, coexistence with the different brands and breeds, how do you actually better manage them is what we are going to focus today. So if you see the concerns, I briefly explained one or two of them, but you have seen most of them um, in your institutions. Um, uh, the ecosystem of uh, you know, education to combine with complete safety uh, is very uh, important for any institution. A lot of times there will be uh, you know, uh, minor violence or bullying or you know, uh, the vandalism that happens and somebody claiming that something is not right and then you know no no information about this uh, student safety during the transport if your if your kid is on the uh, bus uh, is, is there a live stream that goes to parents uh, from the bus so that they can uh, see the kids getting dropped off at the school and when they dropped off at the school if you have a, a face recognition mechanism there when every kid is coming out of the bus uh, capture the face and then send information to the parent saying that kid has been uh, got inside the school uh, getting down the bus and from there when they walk into the school uh, when they go to the classroom the count of the classroom are if only few people are there in the classroom say for example only two people are there in the classroom that is minimum uh, two then do you get uh, do you get a alert saying you know there's only two people in the classroom because what we have noticed in most of the cases uh, if there are two people in the classroom what the educational institution management said is that's a no-no right it has to be either no one or it has to be the group of the people right so those kind of scenarios that comes up which you 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 can prevent them very easily with the proactive intelligence right so the incidents of uh, uh, you know suspects incident of uh, unknown people coming close to the school or the vehicles that are coming pass by and you don't have the record of them uh, and when buses come into your premises your own buses when it comes you take the number and then you can inform uh, you know the um, uh, management that these are the buses passed and came through I think there is a question that says uh, uh, IP cameras and uh, analog cameras. Wamshi will cover that in the technical aspect. We do work with both IP and analog cameras. So what is to cover and what are the areas of concern uh, when it comes to the surveillance? Yes, you have kept too many cameras in there, but like what Dominic said, are these cameras are functional in terms of what they are supposed to do? Right, so the hallway camera got a different functionality versus the school bus tracking camera. The camera inside the school bus got a different, uh, you know, functionality. So school entrances, drop-off points, restricted areas, classrooms, all these uh, uh, different areas should be covered. Primarily, they might have been already covered. You don't need to replace any of those cameras, be it analog or IP cameras. Keep those and deploy a solution which can give uh, AI-based intelligence and then create out of that feed, give situational awareness to the management. Like say, for example, in the school bus, there is a scuffle, right? Uh, so you, you, you need to address that. But if you give access to the live stream, because it's hardly one to two hours that the bus travels, uh, if that live feed is coming back to your school and also you want to share that to the parents, 30 kids picked up and if you want to you know, give 30 streams to their uh, parents so that they can watch live, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it will eliminate the anxiety of somebody, right? So all these things, including small accidents that happens in a, a gym, gym and auditoriums, uh, all, all these can be captured and then can be re retained, retrieved, and also proactively uh, you know, mitigated. 
Yeah, basically what I would like to say is the approach that you typically take for ensuring the safety and security of your premises uh, would be you would first I try to identify what are the concern areas for your specific uh, uh, school or institution. So this is the common minimum that we have uh, you know, depicted here, but you may have other areas. Like for example, if you already have hostels as well in there. So you need to ensure add uh, related to the hostel. For example, you may want to cover the dining area. You may want to cover the kitchen area. So those uh, will get added up. But, but basically the idea is that you will need to identify what are the areas of concern uh, for you for one location and then you can extrapolate it to all the other locations and then combine it. There is a question in the chat, we will address that going forward. But typically for each of your uh, locations, you identify what are your areas of concern uh, is the main aspect. That's the starting point uh, for you. And for each area of concern, what would be the uh, risks and how do you mitigate them? How do you, uh, what are the right solutions for each of those areas of concern is the approach that we typically recommend to take. Uh, if you see uh, uh, you know, the, the the left side and right side, you have two different um, uh, you know areas, and you've got two different uh, kind of um, you know scenarios that can be captured from the camera. Uh, students leaving with a stranger. If we have facial recognition already installed, um, uh, and the students leaving without permission are uh, trespassing unknown people. Vehicle parked in no parking zones, uh, which can cause accidents. Right. So, and, and on the right side, if you see the presence of unauthorized personnel and uh, breaking and entering in the, from the wrong uh, doors or intrusion during the off hours, like after eight o'clock, you don't want anybody to move around in the classrooms, right? So uh, will you get a automated um, you know, alert that one of the classroom there is after seven o'clock, somebody is there. So for this, the AI-based intrusion detection, AI-based uh, loitering, and AI-based uh, facial recognition, automatic number plate, and stopped vehicle analytic, all these will prevent these two, you know, the drop off areas and the restricted areas. So those are the uh, solutions with primarily the existing cameras. I want to reiterate that because when we say all these artificial intelligence-based analytics can be applied, 99% of the time we get a question, what happens to my cameras? So for us, cameras are just a simple device that gives me the feed. And everything happens on the algorithmic side, on the server side, on the cloud side, uh, which you don't need to replace the existing cameras. You may add more because you, if some, some areas are not covered, that you may add new cameras, but you don't need to, uh, you know, replace any one of them in existing. Like I said, the other areas of the concern where the main office receptions and hallways and the school entrances, uh, you have vandalism, misuse, or uh, you know, graffiti painting, uh, after school uh, aggression, uh, and um, you know, bullying of accidents, remote. Uh, you know, uh, all these uh, things, including vehicle tracking, visitor management, improper student pickup, drop off, uh, you know, breaking, the, uh, breaking and entering. So all these can be covered with the intrusion. Okay, another thing I would like to say is, we don't do anything on motion-based. In uh, Durank, everything that we do is on an artificial intelligence-based. So the machine learning is done, and uh, you know all these uh, uh, analytics are run on top of uh, the VMS, uh, what we have. And the advantage of these two integrated into one solution, uh, the seamless application of AI happens when the feed actually comes to the uh, cloud or to the local implementation. You Most of the time, if you have a VMS and if you have a third-party analytic, you get an integration of both of them and it's not seamless in terms of uh, transformation and real-time alert generation. In our case, everything is endemic to uh, Durang. Everything is internal to Durang. Both the feed that comes from the VM, from the cameras, and the management of uh, you know all the uh, users in the system, uh, and applying the analytics on top of that feed is what is our forte. And if you see the other aspect is. When we, when we are saying different areas of concern, those areas of concerns may be different, right? From one camera, what I'm getting is, like say, if, if you want to do uh, crowd numbering, uh, and if you want to do the stopped vehicle from the same camera, you can do the both together. 
and other areas we have listed out is gymnasiums and uh, you know recreational areas and common areas want you want to take over that yeah basically uh, for each of these uh, uh, areas of concern you can identify from your uh, perspective uh, what are the main important points not all of them may be applicable for everybody um, uh, maybe something else uh, is more important for you uh, from what is listed here or what we have uh, uh, portrayed here so you can identify what are your areas of concern and what is the main concern at, for that particular uh, area of concern whether it is misuse whether it is people uh, coming into the gymnasium or auditorium after hours for example uh, maybe they in, in the name of uh, study uh, for example study hours etc so whatever be the area of concern we can look at how that is best addressed using ai uh, and as we say it's ai it, it need not be the existing analytics but we can train the system to cater to a specific detection of anomalies specific requirements as well however there are common ones that are generally applicable all across and using minimum staffing for example to ensure that people enter the gymnasium only when the gym instructor is there available otherwise you know people are not um, allowed to enter for example or you can ensure that minimum one or two people depending on the requirement you can say that two minimum people should be available at any point of time then that's minimum staffing uh, loitering you are aware of what is loitering one is in terms of the safety and security one is also when you are conducting some sporting events if you would like to broadcast it to a larger audience all your parents and other community that's also possible through the solution so you, using the same cameras you will you should be able to broadcast it and and stream it live to all the other parties the analytics that are uh, mentioned here for example facial recognition can be applied in different scenarios in a different way same thing for vehicle tracking uh, whether it is with uh, automatic number plate detection or whether it is related to the vehicles parked in the no parking zone typically there is a drop off zone but if a vehicle stays there for a longer time do you automatically get notified of that uh, so you can dispatch somebody to immediately take an action so that's something that that you need to look at from each individual area of concern what what is the primary area uh, that you would like to address in that area and then uh, how best to apply the ai in it Yeah, so here are a few more, actually a couple more of uh, those areas of concern. So each from each uh, point of view, we have uh, mentioned what would be ideal uh, analytic to apply in particular scenario. For example, valuable items that should not go missing from the classrooms or laboratories. You can ensure that there is an object uh, watch alert uh, automatically if anybody removes that object from that particular location, a valuable item, uh, then you automatically get notified. so loitering intrusion facial recognition which is basically identifying the people uh, inside those are uh, the, those are generally applicable across multiple areas of concern yeah this is uh, related to uh, monitoring while in the transport typically you would, most of the institutions would have uh, some kind of uh, gps tracking typically but uh, very rarely we have seen um, schools uh, or institutions providing live view capability whether it is for internal administrators or whether it is for the parents depending on the need so this, the solutions uh, should be able to are capable of providing that live stream to multiple parents see here the one of the challenges is even if you have deploy cameras typically you will have a 4g or 5g type of a connectivity inside the bus and if multiple people watch at the same time you will hit some road blocks there because not more than three streams or so two or three streams can come out with the durang solution basically only one stream comes out so from the camera or from the bus um, we get one stream per camera if you let's say you deploy two cameras only those two streams come to the platform irrespective of how many number of people watch it at the same time so maybe all the you know you have uh, 40 um, uh, parents watching and your administrators watching only still only the two streams come from the bus and the system takes care of distributing it so optimizing the resource uh, utilization that's an advantage there so would you like to add anything on on this point please no uh, see um... end of the day uh, bandwidth is also a big concern when you have a solution right so uh, multiple streams that are going into the uh, uh, you know uh, to 50 parents or 40 parents a lot of times you lose the uh, uh, you know connectivity or if the bandwidth is allocated to that sim card is uh, uh, limited it gets uh, you know over with, within no time so that's where we do a unicast into our cloud 
and then uh, distribute that as a multicast to all the 40 or 50 parents. So everybody gets the same experience without, uh, you know, uh, losing of the uh, uh, value. So once you have uh, notified these, or at least not, uh, noted these areas of concern and how best to address each of them, uh, you would need to look for a solution that can provide you all these, uh, you know, capabilities or has those capabilities and which is also easier to use. So it is, uh, it's one thing to have the technology uh, that addresses all your needs. It's completely another uh, to ensure that your users are able to use that particular technology. Most of the uh, cases uh, is that the people who are working at the institutes who are in charge of our work, the at the base level of immediately taking action because it's it's not the head of the institutions that will be looking at these you know they, then he can't do anything else obviously you will delegate it to the people uh, at the lower level who will immediately actually need to take the action they are the ones who are taking action and it is important that they should be able to they should be well versed and they should be able to handle uh, any incidents that arise or they should be notified so they are the ones the system should be designed keeping them in mind and that's where uh, Durang focuses uh, focus its energies and ensure that it doesn't require a lot of technical skills to use it the user experience is, is the primary area so when we uh, built the solution it's built on the four major pillars uh, of uh, ensuring that it works with existing cameras that was the first uh, criteria for us that as uh, Durang built the solution with the idea of do more with surveillance, as Dominic initially mentioned uh, during the presentation. So we started off with uh, the idea of doing more with surveillance. Surveillance should not mean just putting up some cameras, recording them in an NVR or a DVR, and only when some incident happens, uh, you go and watch, uh, look for the recording and try to identify the suspect or whatever. So that's how the uh, typical uh, surveillance ha had been. And then you set up some monitors if you are uh, if you have some budgets and if you are able to allocate resources for it, then you also have people who are regularly or continuously monitoring them, monitoring those cameras. So that's how uh, surveillance has been. Uh, it's basically eyeball monitoring. So from eyeball monitoring, we transform it to an incident-based uh, response, uh, management by exceptions, for example, MBE model. So to be able to do that, the first aspect is to First thing is because everybody has cameras, cameras are all pervasive. So we should not have uh, you know, restrictions in terms of what cameras can be used, what cameras cannot be used. The idea is that bring any camera, your own device, and be able to connect to the platform for both a VMS side of things, which is basically ability to connect from multiple locations, ability to provide offsite storage on the cloud, for example, or at your central data center, either way, so that you will have a backup when, when the local recording fails uh, at some point or due to something happens, a fire, an accident happens, you should not lose the entire data. You still will have the backup at your secondary uh, storage at, at, the, at the cloud or at your uh, data center. So providing the features of connectivity across your multiple locations with connecting any make and model of existing cameras, providing offsite storage, ability to create users as required, any number of users, and give specific users access to specific cameras. So one, if your location A, uh, the security in charge of location A will have access to only location A, and the location B uh, will have access to only location B. So you should be able to have that uh, distinction and ensure your proper access control is managed. All that is part of the uh, VMS, and that's a part of the solution that is built across using these uh, four pillars of the solution. The ability to grow and ability to, to be flexible uh, with the needs uh, as your growing needs. So some cameras you may want to have seven days of offsite storage. Some cameras you may want to keep it for 30 days. Some cameras may be at very high resolution. Some cameras may be at a lower resolution. So all that you should be able to manage at an individual camera level. That is the idea for uh, you know, like providing the flexibility and, and the scalability. And uh, from a usage perspective, it's as I said, it's very important that uh, the layman should be able to use the system. And all it requires is a browser. There is no plugin required. There is no other additional software that is required. Typical scenarios, you would be well aware of it. If you install Make A of the camera, you would need uh, Make A software to be able to you know, watch live or watch recordings. You have make B, then you need a different software. And even when you are using the browser, you still need to install some plugins. And sometimes these plugins 
uh, conflict with each other, uh, you will you will face issues. So from our uh, solution from Durang, there is no need for any additional software. There is no additional plugin required. Directly on the browser, you log in to the platform, and then based on your access that is granted by your administrator, you will have access to all those cameras, live recordings, or you know analytic data, etc. So that's the simplicity that's built in the system. Security is, is a primary focus because typically the solution is, is a cloud native solution, which is to say it's delivered from the cloud as a video surveillance as a service, uh, VSAS. However, it does support um, multiple modes of deployment. A hybrid model is possible, or you know, a complete on-prem deployment is also possible. So in any mode, uh, security is kept at the core of the solution. All the data is encrypted end to end both in transit and at rest and you have two-factor authentication uh, multi-factor authentication for the user logins is possible privacy for the uh, cameras is assured because there are layers of uh, uh, security that's built in the platform you can say that nobody will have access to these cameras and then uh, even your provider will not have access even in the cloud provider will not have access to any cameras so all that is built in from a security perspective and the Primary, uh, or the, or the fourth, uh, last but not least, is the AI that is inbuilt. So typically, there are uh, solutions that focus more on the VMS side of it, or there are solutions that are focusing on providing AI with a few analytics, a uh, couple of analytics from somebody, a couple of analytics from somebody else, facial recognition from somebody else, uh, license plate from somebody else like that. But Durang is uh, a provider that is providing all of it as an integrated single solution from both AI and uh, VMS. AI being the fourth pillar of our uh, no solution. All the analytics are based on computer vision and machine learning. So neural networks are used using uh, GPU architectures uh, that, and all of them are custom built network models built by Durang. And it can be further tuned and trained as we deploy uh, more and more solutions. We also provide APIs so you can integrate with existing systems. Um, for example, when, when, when the license plate is recognized, it can automatically notify to your uh, systems of what vehicles entered or for facial recognition, it can get into an attendance management, for example. So that API integrations are uh, well-defined and available in the system. So from all the areas of uh, concern that we saw and the possibilities of applying the analytics, what is the end result that we are looking for? The end result is when you have multiple locations, the end result that we look for with a smart surveillance solution is be able to conduct centralized audits, for example, ability to watch all your locations without having to have a login separately to each location, single login, you will have access to all of it. You can audit um, all your locations, verify what's going on there. Obviously, uh, safety is a concern risk management, uh, improved uh, risk management, both for uh, uh, tran transport scenario as well as in-house in the institution scenario by ensuring some of the analytics like minimum staffing, as we said, if there are uh, staff available or not when students come in. So obviously facility protection, uh, SOP adherence, uh, ensuring that all the, all the uh, your processor are adhering to the standard operating procedures. Etc. So these are the end results uh, that that we look for from the solution. And how is how are these results obtained? It's obtained by taking the video feed, uh, processing them, giving real time notifications in the real time to appropriate personnel. So if it's if it's a, an incident that happens inside the school, maybe the school administrator gets it. If it's an incident that is happening. Uh, from a vehicle perspective, maybe the security officer is informed. Depending, you can decide who should be informed of what kind of an incident or what kind of an event that is triggered in the system. So real-time notifications are sent out. You can also integrate it with um, a bit of automation is also possible. Like, for example, if there is any intrusion in the night, a hooter alarm can go off automatically. So somebody enters a uh, gymnasium area or you know, auditorium in the night, uh, then immediately a hooter sign can go off, you know, uh, alarm can go off. So that integration is also there in the platform, which gives you a level of automation. That, that This is what uh, uh, well-built or well-thought-out implementation of surveillance should provide, and that's what uh, Durang provides. Uh, 
just to give you an idea of how the solution would be, uh, it's basically a centralized view. So across your locations, you have a geo map of all your locations. You can get into any particular location, watch the cameras live or recordings of those particular locations. You can also have a single view of all the camera health the, across all your locations, whatever be the number of cameras. So you have a health, you, you are aware at any given point of time in real time that your cameras are actually functioning. You don't need to go back and realize at some point later that some camera was not recording. You will have an immediate um, notification available with you. So you can ask the vendor to correct it because we don't expect that there will be only one guy providing all the solutions. When you have multiple uh, vendors providing different services, different solutions, the system can also notify the vendor of the CCTV who installed the CCTV, for example, with the CCTV parking a copy of that notification to you. So the vendor can directly come and rectify that camera, for example. Uh, we have a possibility for all the events that get uh, triggered. You have real-time notifications that pop up. All these notifications uh, are provided as reports as well. So you know what kind of incidents are frequently happening. You can do a trend analysis, for example, of what type of incidents are happening more and from what areas uh, of concern those, those are happening more, et cetera. From all, across these incidents that get triggered, um, you also have a smart search feature. So you can look for a specific type of a person or an object across all these incidents. And that's also possible. So you can locate a guy who traveled across in multiple uh, locations, for example. So as I said, we wanted to move away from an eyeball monitoring perspective to an incident-based uh, management. And this is the one that, that allows you to do that which is to say whenever any event is triggered automatically that event is popped up on this uh, command center page. So you don't need to keep watching all the cameras all the time. So you get a pop-up of it along with the live view of the particular um, camera which in which the incident was triggered. So you have this view and you also have a possibility for the guy, for the agent who is monitoring it, the security guard maybe, to take an action on it. He can also escalate it for his manager to review, for example. Uh, then he can review it and close, take an action. So what action is taken on it can also be recorded in this. So you will have it as a record uh, for reference. So instead of having to monitor all the cameras all the time, you focus your energies on uh, whenever any incident happens, immediately uh, you can take an action on it on the end. So there are multiple benefits uh, with the solution uh, like this. Uh, from a security perspective, you would have access to all your premises uh, so that you can immediately respond to incidents. From an IT perspective, you can better coordinate uh, with all your internal customers, provide the right solution to your security teams if, if IT is handling uh, the security deployments, for example. And you will have uh, lesser systems to maintain because you don't have multiple solutions doing multiple things. It's a one integrated solution uh, for both video management as well as the analytics. But much easier to maintain, uh, especially since we use existing cameras. This is a key point because uh, if you use uh, typical solutions wherein the analytics are inbuilt in the camera, because these days cameras do come with analytics inbuilt in them. So you will have to worry about what kind of camera, if the camera uh, is defective, for example, you will have to replace it with exact similar camera. If you are using a camera for facial recognition, then you will have to replace that with a facial recognition camera. If you are using a camera for license plate recognition, when maintenance happens, you know you will have to replace it with that. So all of that headache is eliminated because we are completely camera agnostic. Any type of camera can be connected and the feeds can be analyzed through the platform itself. So there are operations team benefits and overall as an administration, it improves all the stakeholder confidence uh, in terms of the safety and security provided by the institution, both parents, students and the staff. So why uh, Durang is basically the primary uh, reasons why uh, Durang would help um, in, in smart surveillance of your institutions is with its proactive notifications. Uh, it's not a reactive management anymore. You get proactive notifications across. It's a platform that's scalable. It's not a solution that you are deploying for one specific problem. It, it's a platform that allows you to do multiple things, uh, even including the possibility to create new or additional analytics on top of the existing ones. 
you don't need to have eyeball monitoring all the time. It's basically you, you manage it by uh, exception, so through incident management. And finally, Durang works as your technology partner. It's not just a CCTV vendor. Completely device uh, agnostic, um, and then work with you to develop any newer anomaly detections, et cetera. So before I close, I'd like to just uh, leave you with this thought. Uh, this is a study that was conducted uh, by Shane Dawson. Um, basically, uh, I think you can read it for yourself. Uh, not having complete understanding of the technology that is used behind the surveillance in place, it adds to a disciplining effect. I think we are all aware of it. Typically, that's how CCTV was used earlier. So the moment you see there is a camera on the wall or on the ceiling, then you are more careful. Right? Typically, whether it is functioning or not is irrespective of that. But now those days are gone, people will know it. But now with AI, it adds another layer of it because people will not know to what extent uh, AI is being used and how it is used. So it automatically helps uh, in terms of you know ensuring compliance, ensuring less incidents and keeping more safe and secure environment across. Yeah, with that, I think um, from my side, I'll close it uh, back to the floor. Yeah, uh, thank you, Vamshi. His own question, what is the USP of your solution? Same solutions are also available in the market. So what is that? I think probably the statement that you made, it is not the package software. It, it's, it's a probably you know, user software that you could probably talk about. Yes, I think uh, probably the, the presentation would have addressed that point, but uh, just to reiterate on the point, Durang is completely camera agnostic. Uh, it's software that works with any type of camera, any make and model of the camera, and gives you the intelligence insights. So it's an integrated solution that is covering both the video management, which is to say the recordings, ability to uh, locate a specific recording for a specific time, offsite storage, ability to create multiple users and giving access to the specific users, all of it from a video management perspective and also the video analytics perspective. So running video analytics, any number of analytics on any camera uh, onto the using the same uh, video feed that you have on the existing cameras. That, that's how the, the differentiation is. Yeah, Abdul Najib is asking, can Duran provide tech solution with cloud storage? Yes. Um, see, we, we have um, uh, different implementation models. Uh, either the entire Durang can run from cloud, uh, or you can have the entire solution deployed on premises, or you can also do a hybrid model where your uh, analytics are running locally and your metadata is coming to the cloud. Through uh, cloud, you get notification, real time notifications. So it's very flexible in terms of implementation models. Uh, you know, I'll ask Wamshi to elaborate on that. Yeah, uh, sorry, I was just um, missing the point. No, um, about the implementation models, you know, uh, yeah. when we can provide the cloud storage. Uh, yes, you know, yes. All. Yeah, the offsite storage, you know, basically can be provided on the cloud, depending on the number of days that you would need. Uh, basically, we use Microsoft Azure for, for security reasons, basically, but we are not tied with any particular cloud provider. You know, it can be uh, any other cloud provider if you already have a preference, or if you have your own data center, it could be on your own data center as well, on-prem deployment. So the deployment models are quite flexible in the solution. So it could be delivered directly from our Azure cloud, or if you are using Google Cloud or you know AWS, you could do that. Or you have your own data center where you want to keep um, all the storage, we could do that as well. All right. Uh, just to just to just to give a um, you know perception, uh, we we have integrated almost 380 locations for one of the customer with almost 4,500 cameras to uh, stream to the cloud and uh, you know for the analytics purpose. So it, it can be all these um, you know locations of 380, uh, you can imagine you know every make and model of the camera is available there. So we seamlessly connected all of them to the cloud and uh, there is a differential storage that is selected by the customer. So some cameras at the entrance, they want 180 days, some cameras at inside, they want just seven days. So it, at an individual camera level, you can define what is the you know, amount of storage, now, how many number of days uh, you want to get it stored, you can keep that. And when the analytics happen, the real time, uh, what Wamshi has shown, 
um, uh, you know, the command control uh, center also it is integrated into the uh, uh, you know platform. So when when somebody is doing a remote monitoring of 30 locations, 40 locations, or 80 locations, uh, they they only get the notifications based on the events, and they don't need to do the eyeball monitoring. You know, we have network um, uh, you know uh, retail kind of a scenario. Uh, more than a hundred of them where they all integrate to one and then you know one command control center works so that may not be an exact example for the uh, education system but the application wise it can be 100 locations or 500 locations it is uh, you know no matter to us okay uh we have nitin deshbuk uh if you can unmute you have raised the hand uh we have added you on the panel do you have any question, uh, Deshmukh? You can probably unmute and ask. Deshmukh, are you there? Nitin Deshmukh? Okay, uh, there was a question in terms of whether people counting was um, uh, is available or not. Just for reference purposes, I, I wanted to uh, put up this screen. This is uh, an indicative list of uh, the analytics that are integrated in the solution already. We're not specifying some of the analytics that were custom built for specific customers. They are not included here, but these are the ones that are generic and are applicable, are available for on any camera. You can apply any of these analytics that, without any restriction. So yeah, people there count is, there is somebody one... was asking. Right. There is one question in the QA box about um, uh, you know, integration of the fire panel. See, Durank is a very open architecture. Uh, like what we said, we have upstream APIs and downstream APIs uh, to, uh, as a push API or a pull API. Uh, if, if some solutions need these event data or live streams, we can actually send it to the third party listeners. Uh, and the third party can take those and then uh, uh, create their own applications, whether they want to create an Android app or they want to create something which is integrated into their HRM uh, system or integrated into their security system. All those are possible back and forth. And we also do customized analytics for a specific kind of a use case that may be only for a specific uh, you know, need-based uh, analytic that also we build and deploy. Uh, for that particular uh, customer for a turnkey. And the question about the control panel integrations, any kind of a IoT information that is passed back to us, uh, we are primarily a video uh, you know, uh, based uh, platform. We are not a data based uh, platform, but if you need that to be integrated into our command control uh, center uh, solution, it can be brought and then uh, you know provided as dashboard uh, as an additional uh, feature. So, like I said, this is completely flexible. So you come up with something, we can actually deploy them or develop them. Oh, uh, Jayant is asking very interesting questions uh, for school bus, school bus light camera viewing and recording. Which which solution do you provide? Where school bus cameras are recording? How camera can Parents can view. Can you explain? Okay, so uh, let me let me uh, paint a picture of it. You know, you have a bus, you have two cameras, and the two cameras are connected to uh, a, a local device, which we suggest a local device, right? With a SIM card. So that's our Durand Gateway, which is a small footprint hardware, uh, single board computer kind of a thing, uh, very less expensive, and that actually takes the feed from the camera and push us to our cloud. So while we are taking that feed, we are only taking one stream uh, to push it to the cloud. We are not taking multiple streams. Okay, so that makes it very uh, uh, economical uh, for the SIM card because SIM card usage is uh, had to be very, you know, the, the cost is high and the low uh, bandwidth is available. Once that hits our cloud, it actually distributes as a multicast to even 50 parents or 60 parents. So you don't need to worry about increasing the bandwidth. In a, in a, in a generalized sense, what will happen from the bus, if 50 parents are watching live one-to-one, -one, right, P2P, then your, your camera feeds are taken and then just completely pushed to all the 50 parents. In our case, it is not that. We are only taking one single feed and then distributing it from our cloud. So the cloud is the one which is managing. Like your uh, you know, television channel, that, that's where the broadcast happens from the cloud. 
So it is not like a stream, it's a broadcast at that point. Okay, Tapas Chatterjee is asking a question, how do you connect to a system directly through a network switch with static IP? What's the real-time display response? Tapas Chatterjee. So, yeah, so basically there are uh, multiple ways in which we connect to the camera feed. If the location has um, public IP available, then the cloud platform can directly connect to the cameras, either directly to the camera or through the NVR or DVR. Both options are possible. So if the port forwarding is done to the NVR, from the NVR, we can connect to all the cam other camera feeds that are there as in that are connected to that NVR or you do port forwarding to the camera directly, all the cameras can be accessed. Now, in the case of um, scenario where there is no public IP or static IV, IP available at that particular location, we go with what is called the Durang gateway model, um, which Mrs. Srinivas explained just now in the bus scenario. So there is a small footprint device that is kept at the location in which the Durang gateway software gets deployed. Uh, and this software enables the connectivity from the cameras of that particular location to the Durang cloud platform securely. So that you can actually, from the central location, you can discover the cameras that are there in that local uh, network, add those cameras and configure them and manage uh, all those cameras through the gateway uh, software that we provide. So that's how both connectivity models are available, whether you have a public IP at the location or whether you don't have a public IP at the location and whether you have IP cameras at the location or analog cameras at that location, all of them can be brought into a single platform uh, for centralized management and administration. And analytics so, too. Yes, yeah. on top of any camera, you can apply any of the analytics. So Satish Kumar is asking, does the camera require any additional built-in AI technology if failover of VMS? No, we do not depend on any camera functionality at all for analytics. Camera uh, is, as we take the analogy, camera is just the eye, uh, it's the device uh, that gives the feed, continue, the live feed. And the brain is the one that is processing that and telling me what is it that I'm actually seeing. It's not the eye that is telling me what I'm seeing. So it's the same way. Uh, camera is the eye that gives the live feed and the Durant Vision uh, software is the one that processes it and tells you, uh, triggers the events and alerts, etc. So there is no specific feature or functionality that's required from the camera. Any camera we can we can take and run the analytics on it, except just one or two uh, cases where if it is a facial recognition, the resolution needs to be higher. It's not that we need any specific camera, but the resolution of the camera needs to be higher. Uh, so on analog cameras, the accuracy levels will go down. It's not that we cannot do, but we do it, but then the accuracy levels will slightly go down if you use analog camera for facial recognition, for example. Similar thing with the license plate recognition as well. So we need higher resolution for license plate recognition. So on an analog camera, if we do it, the, the accuracy levels would go down, but that's why we prefer IP cameras. Other than these two, the rest of all the analytics, there is no restriction in terms of what type of camera that, that we use. Okay, hey, wonderful, uh, uh, very important, um, very educative uh, session um, that we have today and good questions from the audience. As I said, the importance of surveillance in campuses is extremely important. You don't know what's happening just outside the gate and also what happens to the way inside the vehicle that transport the students. So I'm sure um, every schools in the country, you know, everybody, 99% they have the CCTV. In the beginning we were discussing, though they have a CCTV, they don't know what more they can do they think it's just monitoring, having many monitors in the room, they feel it is secure. No, not that so. So the VMS with the AI can do wonders, can really, you can you can dictate and you can command what you want that that is provided to you at your doorstep. So uh, features on Durang VMS is something that you will not see in many other uh, software that's available in India. I would request the audience here to write to us, uh, to interact with us further, if you have any more questions. And I'm sure Ramshi and Krishnan will be more than happy to assist you with your right answers. And um, uh, those, those educational institute, which has a chain of colleges across the country, 
ideal that you can centralize all the information of various schools in various cities and bring it to one platform. Over to Srini. I would like to add uh, one small point. You know, any any one of you uh, request uh, require more uh, information, we, you can directly reach to us. And also further to that, if you would like to see any proof of concept, uh, please uh, you know are are uh, you know connecting your cameras to our cloud and then tr want to try it out for a week or ten days, please feel free to call us or feel free to uh, you know reach out to us in the email. We will we will try to connect those and then uh, you know provide you the full POC proof of concept. So that's a good news. So you're saying that you can do POC. Any one of them are interested to you know see how does it work on the cloud. So uh, Nitin Deshmukh uh, finally is asking question. Any more cabling from instances required for the AI surveillance? No, of course. No. The answer you don't need. No. It's a software that works on. Yeah, so we are we are a complete uh, software side of the solution. You know, we are like an ERP for uh, surveillance. Uh, we are completely agnostic with the uh, uh, network and also the kind of cameras that are there in the field. You mount a, um, a camera on the drone, and if you would like to bring that feed uh, through Durank and uh, do some analytics and also broadcast to a thousand people, right? At the same time, you know, we're okay to do that. So what it says is any camera, any make, any model, any recording devices can work with Durank VMS. So Correct. ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, last word from uh, Vamshi before we close this. No, I guess, uh, no, uh, thank you very much for taking the time and uh, staying through the presentation. We hope we made uh, you worthwhile of your time. And for any further questions, please do reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer it and provide a proof of concept also if required. Thank you. So Srini and Vamshi, what is the next webinar and what is the next episode would be? What is that you're trying to cover? We have covered mm -hmm. uh, warehouses, we covered uh, uh, institutions. So what else? I'm sure there are many. Oh, yes. Quite a few yeah. we'll need to pick and choose. So we, we, we will see what makes uh, more sense and then uh, pick up the next. So we ensure that you know we come out with something more interesting. So it's like a serial. Question mark. Yeah, Wait absolutely. and watch. We'll let you know. So what yes, happens? We'll we'll let, let, the the <laughs> let the suspense continue. Let the suspense continue. Wonderful <laughs> to have you all, gentlemen. Thank you, Sri. Thank you, Vamshi. God bless you. Wonderful session. I enjoyed this webinar thoroughly. Look forward to see you again. Ladies and gentlemen, bye-bye. Have a safe bye -bye. weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Dominic.